Hey everyone. Welcome to Top Tech News. This is your news channel for getting updated with the latest tech news headlines and their impact on business and our lives. To read the full news article for any of the news that we cover, simply click on its link given below in the description. To stay updated, show us some love and hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. This way you would be informed whenever we upload a new video. Hi, my name is D and I am your host for today. Today's top headlines are Redmi K40 gaming sale goes through the roof with 100,000 units in one minute. Duo captures the first 8K VR drone video over Iceland's volcano. Honor Play 5 specs leak to arrive with OLED screen. Samsung Galaxy M32 key specs revealed by Geekbench. NASA suspends SpaceX's $2.9 billion moon lander contract after rivals protest. Let's get started. Redmi K40 gaming sale goes through the roof with 100,000 units in one minute. Xiaomi's brand Redmi has launched its own understanding of what a gaming smartphone should be under the name K40 Gaming. The device runs on Dimensity 1200 chipset and comes with the latest bells and whistles like UFS 3.1 storage, LPDDR5 RAM, 67 watts ultrafast charging and several solutions for cooling and heat dissipation. With such specs, it is no wonder that the Redmi K40 Gaming was a huge success during its first flash sale in China. According to the brand, the device sold 100,000 units in just one minute. The sale includes all five different memory combinations, from the cheapest 6 and 128GB one, all the way to the 12 and 256GB special edition with Bruce Lee theme and yellow rear panel. The price of the phone is between 1,999 Chinese yuans and 2,699 Chinese yuans, which is around $310 to $420. Other impressive specs of the phone include JBL tuned stereo speakers, pop-up shoulder keys and three cameras with a LED flash shape like a tiny lightning bolt. Our hopes are this phone will make it global. And some rumors suggested it might arrive under the name Poco F3 GT. Duo captures the first 8K VR drone video over Iceland's volcano. The Perlin Museum, host of a state-of-the-art 8K planetarium and other exhibitions focused on Iceland, commissioned filmmaker Ragnar Sigurdsson, founder of Arctic Images, and drone pilot Arnar Thorthorsson to fly an 8K-capable 360 camera over the erupting volcano to capture an immersive virtual reality experience. On March 19, 2021, the Mount Fagradalesville volcano in Geldingadalur, Iceland erupted for the first time in 800 years and has continued to spout new fissures over the course of the last month and a half. Multiple artists have captured different views and perspectives on the eruption. From a drone that nearly melted from coming too close to the mouth of the volcano to another drone surviving a direct strike by a flying chunk of lava, the majesty of the eruption has been shot many times from the sky. However, the duo of Sigurdsson and Thor Thorson are the first to shoot an impressive 360-degree 8K aerial video of the eruption that is designed to be viewed in VR. Shared by the Insta360 team, as the footage was shot on an Insta360 Pro 2, the best experiences had with resolution up as high as your bandwidth can handle on both desktop or VR headset. However you choose to watch it, make sure not to forget to look around to see the full experience. As explained on the Insta360 blog, the Dew mounted the Insta360 Pro 2 on a DJI Matrix 600 drone and flew it extremely close to the volcano. During the flight the lava reached temperatures as high as 1,240 degrees Celsius, about 2,264 degrees Fahrenheit, but the camera sustained the journey, delivering these epic shots, the company notes on its blog. Camera weight and image quality are two common limiting factors for shooting VR drone videos. Insta360 Pro 2's lightweight form factor, weighing just 1.5 kilograms, enabled the drone pilot to fly smoothly without the drone being weighed down by the camera. Insta360 also says the quality of the footage is as much thanks to its camera as it is to Sigurdsson's expertise with the camera. A native Icelander and professional photographer for over 30 years, Ragnar's images have been featured in publications such as the New York Times, National Geographic, Times, Nature, and Newsweek, Insta360 writes. Now with VR technology, Ragnar and other photographers can deliver deeply immersive experiences of the Earth's wonders to audiences around the world. Honor Play 5 specs leak, to arrive with OLED screen. According to a tipster, the Honor Play 5 will be powered by the Dimensity 800 you soak and pack a 6.53 inches full HD plus OLED panel, which we know will have a notch for the selfie camera. The Play 5's back cover doesn't have a fingerprint reader, but since the smartphone will come with an OLED screen, we could see an in-display solution. 
the 64 MP camera will be joined by 18 MP, likely ultra wide, and 22 MP, likely depth and macro units. The smartphone will be 7.46 mm thin and weigh 179 grams. It will be fueled by a 3800 mAh battery, which will likely charge through a USB C port. We will hopefully learn more about the Play 5 selfie camera and pricing and availability soon. Samsung Galaxy M32 key specs revealed by Geekbench. A Samsung device bearing model code SMM325FE, and believed to be the Galaxy M32, has popped up on Geekbench with its key specs. According to the benchmark database, the device runs Android 11, has 6GB RAM onboard, and is powered by MT6769VCT, which we know is a part of the Helio G80 soak. Geekbench doesn't reveal any other specs of the device, but the smartphone was spotted on Decro last week with a 6000 mAh battery. The Galaxy M32 is said to be based on the Galaxy A32 4G, which comes with the Helio G80, 6.4 inches full HD plus 90 Hz AMOLED screen, in display fingerprint scanner, and a 5000 mAh battery with 15 watts charging. For photography, the Galaxy A32 4G comes with a total of 5 cameras in tow, a 20MP selfie shooter inside the notch, with a 64MP primary camera on the rear joined by an 8MP ultrawide, 5MP depth, and 5MP macro units. Details are scarce about the Galaxy M32 right now, but more information about it should surface soon. NASA suspends SpaceX's $2.9 billion moon lander contract after rivals protest. NASA has suspended work on SpaceX's new $2.9 billion lunar lander contract while a federal watchdog agency adjudicates two protests over the award, the agency said Friday. Putting the Human Landing System, or HLS, work on hold until the GAO makes a decision on the two protests means SpaceX won't immediately receive its first chunk of the $2.9 billion award, nor will it commence the initial talks with NASA that would normally take place at the onset of a major contract. Elon Musk's SpaceX was picked by NASA on April 16 to build the agency's first human lunar lander since the Apollo program, as the agency opted to rely on just one company for a high-profile contract, many in the space industry expected to go to two companies. As a result, two companies that were in the running for the contract, Blue Origin and Dynetics, protested NASA's decision to the Government Accountability Office, which adjudicates bidding disputes. Blue Origin alleges the agency unfairly moved the goalposts at the last minute and endangered NASA's speedy 2024 timeline by only picking SpaceX. Pursuant to the GAO protests, NASA instructed SpaceX that progress on the HLS contract has been suspended until GAO resolves all outstanding litigation related to this procurement, NASA spokeswoman Monica Witt said in a statement. Starship, SpaceX's fully reusable rocket system under development to eventually ferry humans and cargo to the Moon and Mars, won NASA's award mainly for its massive cargo capability and its proposed bid of $2.9 billion, far cheaper than Blue Origins and Dynetics, according to a NASA source selection document. Starship's development to this point has been driven primarily by Musk, SpaceX's billionaire founder and chief executive. The company has launched several Starship prototypes and short and high-altitude test flights at its Boca Chica, Texas, launch facilities. Landing the prototypes after soaring over six miles in the air has proved to be a formidable challenge, all of SpaceX's high-altitude prototype rockets have been destroyed in landing phase explosions, except the last one which nailed the landing. NASA has said picking one company was the best decision it could make at the time with the funds made available from Congress. Last year, Congress gave the agency $850 million of the $3.3 billion it requested to procure two lunar landers. SpaceX's award was a key first step in a broader program to secure transportation to the moon, NASA's human spaceflight chief Kathy Luter said at the time, promising that new contract opportunities will open up in the near future. Well, that's about it for today. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. And do show us some love by clicking on the thumbs up button. Have a wonderful day everyone and we will be back again soon.